This is Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson. Black bears have lived in the Pocono Mountains for thousands of years. But they now have some new neighbors. People are building homes and moving in. Biologist Gary Alt studies the bears and teaches the humans. And everyone you pick up, they do the same thing. See how they are? It's a natural reflex. See what I mean? The bears have just been able to adapt to humans incredibly well. I mean, to the point where most researchers in other parts of the country find it hard to believe that bears can do that. You'd never expect them to survive in a place like this. And yet, here in the Poconos, we've got hundreds of bears living with thousands of people right in these developments. The Kaplan family is sharing their home with a 314-pound guest. She's a bear Gary knows, named Pinta. And in mid-January, five weeks after her arrival, she gives birth to three cubs. She's only five years old right now and she's already raised two litters. I'd call her a good mother for pulling that off. Gary will use Penta's maternal instincts to solve a perpetual problem, orphaned cubs. Quite often people just go for walks in the woods and they pick up a cub, and uh, they shouldn't. The mothers are okay. This is the sound we hope he makes when we introduce him. We need him to cry. Gary will attempt to get Penta to adopt the cub. It's a risky plan. If she detects the scent of the cub's natural mother, she might kill it. But Gary is out to fool her. He covers the orphan with Vicks Vapor Rub to disguise the scent. It works like magic. Pinto will nurture the new cub along with her own three. She's still hibernating, more a state of drowsiness than of deep sleep. She hasn't eaten since December, yet her stored fat feeds a growing family of four. As spring approaches, restless cubs help rouse her. And finally, the family leaves the Kaplan's deck behind. For the cubs, it's a new world. Food is still scarce, so maple sap provides Penta's first meal in four months. Hibernation and nursing cubs have drained one-third of her body weight. She is ravenous, but she'll continue to lose weight for another few months until food becomes more abundant. Despite the strain, she never stops nursing her contented brood. Penta must forage constantly and cover a large territory to find anything edible. But her cubs hinder her search. They're too small to travel far. When you watch these mothers with cubs in the spring of the year, just the maternal investment is so horrendously high. And the stress can be very high with that too. As spring advances, the cubs grow bigger and stronger. They can now be left alone while Penta forages a wider territory. Soon they start feeding themselves, and Penta begins to pack back on the pounds. She gets food where she can find it. In Pennsylvania, uh, we have tremendous amount of natural food and we also have tons and tons of food available through human activities where they get a tremendous amount of nutrition, uh, which is not natural, it's unnatural. Clashes between bears and humans are potentially dangerous for both. Fortunately, Penta moves away from houses and feeds mostly on blueberries. Then, in midsummer, Gary loses her radio signal. 
He searches for six weeks without success. At last, she's spotted, and her whereabouts are disturbing. She has become the welcome dinner guest of the Erickson family. Penta and the cubs are being hand-fed. I got more for you. There. One of the impacts of uh, feeding bears in backyards like this is uh, they grow more rapidly and they have larger litters and they breed earlier. The Ericksons agree not to hand feed Penta anymore. Gary takes this opportunity to fit her with a new collar. His studies of Penta and other bears will continue, as will his effort to educate the public about the animals that share their wooded community. He hopes bears and humans will manage to live side by side, but apart.